بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ڈی اے ویور السلام علیکم آئی ایم ذشان حیدر رضوی یو آر ہوسٹ آف دس ویری بیوٹیفل پروڈکشن آف چینل ون ٹائٹل ان اردو پیغام انسانیت وچ مینس دا میسج آف ہیومینٹی اینڈ ایز یو آر آلریڈی اویئر دیٹ ان دس اینول محرم پروڈکشن آف چینل ون وی اسپیک ود ویریس گریٹ پرسنالٹیز فرام اکراس دا گلوب talking over the important duties, the lessons one can learn from the tragedy of Karbala. And there are various other factors, important elements, and the messages through which one can make his life better in this modernized world. Dear viewers, tonight in this very special episode, we will be having an opportunity to talk to few great personalities. In our first segment, we will be talking with Hujjatul Islam al Muslimin, Islamic scholar, brother Jafar Ladakh, and uh, Dr. Shabir Tejani and Dr. Abbas Tejani together joining us in our second segment in this very special episode of the program, The Message of Humanity. Well, let me not take much time and start with our first segment with uh, brother Jafar Ladakh, who is an Islamic scholar, travels worldwide for uh, the Majalis recitation. Recently, he visited Mumbai at uh, Bandra Khoja Masjid, recited majalis on a few very important topics which you can definitely check out on our youtube channel moving on towards him and uh, brother salamu alaikum alaikum salam wa rahmatullah brother thank you so much for joining us on this very important platform of uh, channel win and um, as we are talking over the important messages from the tragedy of karbala uh, i would request you to start this conversation with uh, the primary reasons the important factors which made imam hussein alayhi salam to travel all the way towards karbala what were the key f- reasons what were the important reasons uh, uh, brother uh, for which imam hussein alayhi salam traveled uh, towards karbala all the way from the city medina bismillah rahman rahim imam al hussein alayhi salam gives the reasoning for his movement himself okay when he leaves the city of medina and he tells his brother Muhammad al-Hanafiya inni lam akhruj ashiran wala batilan wala mufsidan wala zalima wa inma kharajtu bi talab al-islah fi ummati jaddi Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam he gives his mission statement and the reasoning for the entirety of his movement and he says i am not rising against yazid because i am an oppressor or because I am just here to have fun, or because I am seeking fame, or I'm seeking power. I'm rising for one reason, and that is islah fi ummati jaddi, reformation in the ummah of my grandfather. The Muslim ummah had become so stagnant in its action and thinking, it had become so backwards in opposition to the goals and the practices of Islam, that Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam saw this and also mixed with when threats were upon his life the attempted force of allegiance was upon him and the third element being the Muslim ummah rallied around him and demanded from him that he would uprise and overthrow Banu Umayyah in revolution when all of these factors came together that is when Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam left for the ultimate purpose of reformation meaning that we can verify our understanding our movement with Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam as to whether we have reformed or not reformed if we are reformed then we know that we are in line with the goal of Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam if there's no reformation in ourselves in our families in our communities then really we are not in line with the with the mission of Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam Well, Jazakallah, guys. Thank you so much for increasing our knowledge on this uh, very important context. Well, uh, of all, all the reasons which you have uh, shared with us, uh, the reasons for which Imam Hussain al-Islam traveled towards Karbala, it clearly identifies that uh, there was nothing related to any kind of power and this was not a political war at all. Well, 
At that point of time, Yazid was doing anything and everything which was against Islam. And Imam Hussein alayhi salam stood against the tyrant Yazid, the accursed one. Well, on, on a similar note, Aga, as we see that Islam was being hijacked then when uh, Yazid and his followers were doing anything and everything which was totally against Islam. They were trying to put on their own malicious ideologies in the name of Islam, in the name of Jihad. And similarly, in today's world, as we see that uh, many terrorist groups, be it ISIS, Boko Haram, Al-Shabaab, and many other terrorist groups are practicing the same thing which Yazid followed then. Aga, in the name of Jihad, these things are being done which are totally against Islam. And, and it clearly denotes that Jihad is one of the most misunderstood word in today's world. Uh, I would request you to increase our knowledge on uh, a matter of clarification on what does the term Jihad mean. Jihad, in the context of war, would be translated as sacred defense. A very famous hadith from Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam divides jihad into two. Jihad al-Akbar and Jihad al-Azghar. Jihad al-Akbar is the greater struggle, which is the struggle against the soul against the self that is very desirous of everything corrupt, be it power, laziness, wealth, uh, manipulation of other people. We have these within us. And to struggle against this, when those things manifest, when the opportunity comes in front of me, this is the meaning of Jihad al-Akbar, the greater struggle. Jihad al-Azghar is the type of struggle which is on the battlefield or which is in a time of war or which is in a time of fitna okay. in order to establish truth and justice. And so we often find in the world today that countries have created a sacred doctrine around going to war, around value of the military, around being honorable towards one state. And this is well accepted. In the same idea, Islam says that where there is injustice, where there is war upon you, where you need to defend your family, you have the right to be able to do so. And this is known as Jihad al-Azghar, which is the greater war, which is the greater battle for the purpose of being able to defend something for the purpose of the sacred for the purpose of God, for the purpose of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In our world today, mm -hmm. Muslims are being attacked from various different corners. It could be in terms of uh, war by sanctions, it can be war by spies, it can be war um, based upon the thinking, it can be war literally with jets, it can be war with suicide bombers attacking Muslims. All of this constitutes various different reasonings and times to be able to engage in jihad and types of jihad. Unfortunately, this term and this understanding has been hijacked by some of the groups that you have mentioned, such as Al-Qaeda, such as ISIS, such as Boko Haram. And they have completely abused the meaning of these terms and the boundaries that are set within these terms. Sacred defense is for the purpose of ensuring that the Muslim Ummah is united in its goal to bring about justice and freedom and liberation to people who are being abused and being killed. What we find with ISIS is that they are the ones who are abusing and killing. What we find with Al-Qaeda and Taliban, they are the ones who are abusing and doing the murdering. What we find with Boko Haram, they are the ones who are abusing and doing the murdering. And so the reality is they are not engaged in a state of jihad. Actually, jihad needs to be done upon them. And this is what you're finding today in Syria, what you're finding in Iraq, what you're finding in Yemen, what you're finding in Bahrain, and so on and so forth. Today, we need the Muslim Ummah to come together and to understand how the Quran and the Prophet understood jihad and not to allow it to be manipulated and abused the way in which it is being done so today. Yazid was a person who wanted to destroy Islam the same way ISIS wanted to destroy Islam. The reality is neither of their movements are truly in line with Islam. 
It is just done by name in order to bring money, in order to bring people with it. But really, these things are in complete opposition to the reality of Islam. Well, thank you so much, Aga. Jazakallah, that was such a brief explanation. And I'm sure uh, most of our viewers who have joined us who had this misconception uh, in regard to the term jihad would have been clarified. Thank you so much, Aga, for increasing our knowledge in this regard. And moving on now with our next question. Uh, brother, as we see that, we, we listen to the lectures, we read that not only the sayings of Holy Prophet wasallam, not only the narrations, but there are Quranic verses revealed honoring the virtues of Imam Hussain salam. I would request you to increase our knowledge with uh, uh, any narration or uh, of course, the Quranic ayats and uh, the important sayings of Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam honoring uh, uh, the great personality of uh, Imam Hussain Alayhi Salam. Before we even mention the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we need to mention what Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says in the Quran. For example, he says in chapter number 3, Surah Al-Imran, verse number 33, Allah has chosen the family of Ibrahim Alayhi Salam Alameen, above the entirety of the universe, not just mankind, not just earth, the entirety of the universe. Imam Hussain alayhi salam is from the family of Ibrahim alayhi salam. He is chosen by Allah above the entirety of the universe. Then we have, for example, in chapter 33, verse 33, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Innama yuridullahu liyudhiba ankum rijsa ahlil bayt that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has purified Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam with a thorough and perfect purification. Yes. So Imam Hussain alayhi salam is within Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam. There's no one who can deny this fact. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has elevated Imam Hussain alayhi salam in these ways. As a response, in order to expand on some of the meanings of these ayat, the Holy Prophet of Islam, Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spoke in various different ways about the position and the sanctity of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. Some of these hadith are considered sahih, some of them considered mutawatir. Mutawatir means they have been narrated so widely by the Muslim ummah and in every generation that we can be certain the Holy Prophet of Islam said those narrations. For example, the most famous of those, the Prophet said, Husaynun minni wa ana min al Husayn. Husayn is from me and I am from Husayn. Or another mutawatir tradition where he says, Hassan al Husayn, Sayyidai Shababi Ahl al Jannah. Hassan and Husayn are the two youths of paradise. And Fatima, my daughter, is the leader of all the women of the universe. Another hadith from the Holy Prophet of Islam, he states, I am at war with those who will fight you, O Hussein, and at peace with those who are at peace with you, O Hussein. Mm -hmm. This is particularly important because the Holy Prophet of Islam does not make a mistake, especially when he goes to war with someone. So if he says, I am at war with those who go to war with you, it means that Rasulullah is at war with those people. The Holy Prophet of Islam is also narrated to have said, he who loves Hassan and Hussein has loved me, the messenger. And he who makes them angry has made me angry. There is no doubt that Imam al Hussein alayhi salam and Imam al Hassan alayhi salam were angry with Yazid ibn Muawiyah, which means Rasulullah was angry at those two individuals as well. Okay. Another hadith from the Prophet, he says, I named Hassan and Hussein and Muhsin the names of the sons of Harun who were Shubbar, Shubair, and Mushbir. Meaning that there is a direct relationship between the personalities, the names that were given to the children of Prophet Harun alayhi salam and the children of Imam Ali alayhi salam. Why is this important? Mm -hmm. Because as we know, the hadith says that, O oh Ali, you are to me as Harun was to Musa. Illa annahu la nabiyu ba'di, except that there shall be no prophet after me. Harun alayhi salam was the 
wazir, inheritor, responsible person of the ummah after Musa alayhi salam. Similarly, Imam Ali alayhi salam was that to Harun. When Harun had his three children, those were their names. When Imam, al Imam Ali alayhi salam had his three children, Hassan, Hussein, and Muhsin, these names were given to the children of Imam Ali alayhi salam in order to show the relationship as a family unit between Rasulullah Musa, between Harun, Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam, the three children and the three children of Lady Zahra Fatima alayhi salam and Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam. These are well-known traditions that are accepted by every single Muslim and uh, that's why when the Prophet said these things, we need to not just consider them as just hadith, but to understand why the Prophet said this and what message was he trying to communicate to the Muslims then and what message he is trying to communicate to the Muslims today, inshaAllah. Jazakallah brother, thank you so much for increasing our knowledge with uh, the important uh, narration and the saying and of course the Quranic arts. Uh, uh, in the honor of uh, Imam Hussein alayhi salam. And uh, brother, lastly, if you would like to share some important messages uh, through the tragedy of Karbala with all our viewers, the Husseini followers, striving to become a true follower of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, uh, what important messages you would like to share with them? Our ulama state that there are several principal themes and messages that come from the movement of Karbala. For example, one of them will be that to always be distant from any oppressive leader. Another one, for example, would be the concept of sacrifice. Another, for example, would be to appreciate and understand the role of women and the role of youth in those movements. Another one will be the role of creating justice within society. Another is the importance of loyalty to a movement. Another one is the importance of being brave and courageous through that movement. Another one is the importance of seeing yes. patience in your movement. Another, for example, is the issue of having good leadership in your community. All of these different elements that can be found in the movement of Karbala are underscored and pivoted by the one ultimate aspiration of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, which was reformation. Islah fi ummati jaddi, reformation in the ummah of my grandfather Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. This means that whenever we try to see what we're doing okay. in the months of Muharram, in the months of Safar, and throughout the year, all of this is for the ultimate goal of reform. If I have not reformed myself, then really I have not been in keeping with the movement of Karbala. When I have reformed myself, I have achieved the goals of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam in myself. We often get bogged down in arguments, points of debate, that are very secondary or tertiary or distanced from the goals of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. He wants us to create a just society. He wants us to ensure that human beings have access to their rights. And often we get bogged down arguing and fighting with each other over things that are very, very far from the movement of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. The longer brothers and sisters, we end up arguing about these small and petty debates, the less likely we will be able to really implement the movement of Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam. And I tell you from the bottom of my heart, seeking forgiveness for this, I don't think Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam wants us to be arguing about these small, small issues. And we need to grow from that. We need to become a lot more mature. We need to see what Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam really did and the grandness of his personality. When we're in line with his movement, then we won't have time to argue over things that really are very far from the movement of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. This is what holds us back. Okay. We need to make sure that we move everything that holds us back from achievement, inshaAllah. Well, Jazakallah, brother. Thank you so much for uh, sharing such a wonderful message. And uh, I'm sure this will be beneficial for all of us. Thank you, brother, for joining us. And now we move on to our next segment, dear viewers. 
It's a great opportunity talking with two great Noha reciters, Dr. Shabbir Tejani and Dr. Abbas Tejani, majorly known as Tejani Brothers, joining us all the way from the city Leicester in United Kingdom. Well, dear viewers, uh, tonight our guest Tejani Brothers are uh, socially active in uh, propagating the true teachings of Alul Bayt Salam through Naha recitations. They have released 14 Naha albums till date and they travel worldwide to recite Nahas. They professionally work as doctors. Salaam alaikum brothers. Wa alaikum salam, our respected brother. Well, a very warm welcome and thank you so much for joining us on this very important platform of Channel Ven, where we are talking over the important messages from the tragedy of Karbala. Uh, well, Brother Shabir, I would request you to start this conversation in the light of uh, the great personality of uh, Imam Hussain alayhi salam. How can one distinguish between the truth and falsehood from the tragedy of Karbala? I would request you to start this conversation in this context. When we look at the tragedy of Karbala and the implications it has on our day-to-day -day lives, on our distinguish, dis, on distinguishing between right and wrong, truth and falsehood, we see that Karbala forms a, a guide to us as to when to make the right choice and what is the wrong choice to make in any situation. When we look at the story of Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam, we see that he had a very simple choice to make. He had a choice of either giving bay'at to the tyrant of the time, who was Yazid, may Allah curse him, or if he didn't give the, the bay'at, the, the, his allegiance to Yazid, he would face tragedy and his family would be massacred. And it is at that point that Imam al-Hussein made the choice in order to save humankind and mankind and the religion to actually make a stand and to fight the tyranny of Yazid, fight the injustice of Yazid, uh, fight the, the oppression of Yazid. And from that we learn that actually even if making the right choice is hard, we should make a stand against wrong uh, and follow the path of Imam al-Hussein. Even though his family was massacred, we see until this very day, his story is remembered, Karbala is remembered, and Karbala stands as a beacon for truth and justice, and it stands against oppression and falsehood. The story of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam just highlights uh, a very well-known saying in English that to be able to smell the fragrance of the roses, one must learn to hold onto the thorns. The story of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, as is quite rightly illustrated, shows that for good and for truth to, to prosper and to be spread uh, throughout the world, we need to know when to make a stand and we need to know when to fight against falsehood. If you see any injustices happening within your communities, within your families, um, around the world, it is very important, like Imam Hussein and Islam shows, to make a stand up against those particular injustices and to change the world for the better because that is what being a true Husseini truly is. Well, Jazakallah brothers, thank you so much for increasing our knowledge on this uh, very important note. Moving further, as we see that uh, with the beginning of the month of Muharram, the duties being performed by the followers of Imam Hussain salam all across the globe is truly commendable. I would request you to share some of the major steps being taken in your city to spread the important messages from the tragedy of Karbala. Hassan, thank you. Thank you very much for that question. Um, we're currently um, based and we live in Leicester in the United Kingdom um, and we're currently in the island of Reunion Island um, in a city called Saint Denis which is the capital of Reunion Island and over here whilst we're out here we're partaking in the Aza of Imam Hussein alayhi salam in the current city that we're in um, this involves commemoration through through the martyr that happens uh, as well as the lamentation um, we see around the world today that the name of Muhammad Hussein is now is being spread in a variety of various different forms from processions to the lamentation taking place inside the mosque but also television programs that are broadcasting what is happening in the world today to lament Imam Hussein alayhi salam. We see this in the form of seminars that take place that are televised out. We see this in the form of discussions that happen on tele television channels. But we also see that the name of Imam Hussein alayhi salam is attached to distribution of water and food. There was a procession in our hometown of Leicester just yesterday where food was distributed as well as water to the needy, to those that 
that um, are homeless. Um, and it's estimated during Muharram, during the 10 days of Muharram, every hour there is $5,000 worth of water that is being distributed in the name of Muhammad Hussein on a daily basis. Every hour, $5,000 worth of water over the 10 days of Muharram. Um, and it's something that, that, it's a philosophy that we keep alive throughout the whole 40 days. Yeah, um, just in short, uh, obviously the the way that the message of Muhammad Hussein is spread to the outside communities should be relevant to the environment, the society that you're living in. Um, we see here in Reunion, uh, in the Julus especially, there'll be a lot of speeches and recitations in the local language, which is French. And the same is done in our hometown of Leicester. There is uh, the Karbala project where we teach the youngsters, the youths, about what happened in the tragedy of Karbala in a, on a visual basis. And also there's distribution of water, uh, which, which marks and symbolizes the three days of thirst that Imam al Hussein and his companions had to endure. Well, Jazakallah, brother, that's a wonderful initiative. And we pray that such involvement and such uh, major steps keeps on increasing year after year during the holy month of Muharram. Well, brother, I would now move on with a very important question on a factual point of view. Uh, brothers, as we see that United Kingdom is more dominant with Christianity, and in such situation, what are the contributions from the Democrats or the leaders from various backgrounds when it comes to morning programs being organized on various uh, platforms. Like as we have witnessed that uh, the Western region is always targeted when it comes to the propagation of Islamic objectives. So I would request you to share some of the important uh, reaction or the contributions from people in your city. Thank you very much for that question. Um, it is a very good question, obviously, especially in the West, in the environment that we live in. Um, there is a, a, a portrayal of what Islam is in the media, and as a result, um, there, is, there can be a backlash on the Muslim community, having said that. Um, the efforts that are being made at the moment in order to portray the message of Imam al-Hussain, the fight for justice, the fight for truth, the fight for humanity is actually attracting a lot of people from the local community, the non-Muslims, the leaders of our community, and they are coming into our centers and seeing what the message of Muhammad Hussein is all about. Um, obviously, there will always be obstruction when it comes to how free you can be in the Azadari of Muhammad Hussein. But on the other hand, as the mourners of Muhammad Hussein, we must take into account the society that we live in, the environment that we live in and what is relatable and what is not relatable to the people within the environment that we're in. So Alhamdulillah, it's good to see that the Julusas are happening, that people are partaking in them, both Husseini people who are Shia and non-Shia, Muslim and non-Muslim, and also the leaders of the community are partaking in this. And yes, there is a big push from local communities to try and integrate more, more of what we're doing within society, there's seminars, conferences, which are open to all. And Alhamdulillah, there's a lot of people who are now developing an interest in the message of Karbala and the message of Muhammad Hussain yeah. And just to put that into perspective, um, very recently, um, the, um, the local parliament in Scotland have actually now dedicated one whole day um, and called it Imam Hussein Day. It's the first time in the West that any particular government, any particular parliament, have notarized a particular day dedicated to Imam Hussein alayhi salam. So it shows that if you work with the local people, if you work with the local authorities um, and explain what the message of Imam Hussein alayhi salam is, because a lot of the misunderstandings happen because people do not truly understand why it is that we take out these processions, what message we're trying to preach. So as long as you get your local member of parliament on board, there is a lot of freedom that can be given. Jazakallah. Brothers, I would now proceed further with uh, a very important thing that, uh, as we all know that you both are great Naha reciters, you travel worldwide to recite Nahas, and you have released 14 Naha albums till date, uh, which has played a very vital role, of course, in propagating um, the messages from the tragedy of Karbala. I believe Noha Khani plays a very vital role. It makes it uh, very communicative. It comprehends what exactly happened in Karbala. Uh, br brothers, I would request you to share some important uh, thing in this regard, specifically for all our Noha reciters watching this show right now. 
like uh, how beneficial or how important initiative it is to recite Noha and uh, spread the message of Imam Hussain alayhi salam? Thank you for the question. Alhamdulillah, we have been given the honor and the blessing of being able to promote the message of Imam Hussain alayhi salam as the Zakirs of the Ahlul Bayt. And there are very few people that are fortunate enough to have this station, this opportunity. Alhamdulillah, I find that Noha Khani and Sana Khani of the Ahlul Bayt has become a big part of our life. It is, I would say, the main part of our life. Even though during the daytime or in our professional lives we work as doctors, but that goes hand in hand with this, this servitude that we do towards the Ahlul Bayt. We find that when you, as you grow up, the love of the Ahlul Bayt, if it resonates in your heart, you want to try and do anything and everything you can in order to um, show or to portray that love and to serve the Ahlul Bayt. Now, through the Noha Khani, we see that actually the Mesri Muhammad Hussain is being spread far and wide. Alhamdulillah, currently we're sitting in Reunion Island, which is in the middle of the Indian Ocean, a good few thousand miles away from where we live. And we've been invited here specifically to do the Zakiri and the Noha Khani of the Ahlul Bayt. And it just shows the power that this medium has. It is said that when the tragedy of Karbala happened, it is through the pens of the poets and the voices of the reciters that the message of Karbala was spread. And inshallah, we hope that we can continue this message and keep this message alive, not only for ourselves, but through our children and through the generations that come after us, inshallah. Yeah, absolutely. Jazakallah, of course, it's a blessing and it's a great duty for all those who uh, take initiative to recite Naha and be a part of it. Uh, I pray that uh, may Allah rewards um, with the blessings of al Bayt to one and all who are keen in learning and uh, being a part of Naha recitation um, all across the globe. Uh, brother, I would request you to recite a few couplets uh, since uh, uh, our viewers and most of us haven't got an opportunity. Perhaps uh, this is the very first time uh, both of you joining us uh, on Channel Ven. I would request uh, both of you to recite a few couplets uh, uh, in the honor of uh, Imam Hussain alayhi salam. Um, inshallah, we'll just recite one verse of uh, a noha called I Will Come Calling to You Hussain. It highlights the importance of doing the ziyara of Imam Hussain alayhi salam. And inshallah, we pray that for all of the viewers who are watching at home, anyone with the wish of going to Karbala has that wish granted. Insha'Allah. Every day it cuts me inside. I'm so very far from your side. I would give away these eyes just to catch a glimpse of your shrine. If I have to cross the seas, and every desert in between I will come crawling to you Hussein I will come crawling to you Hussein They can cut my arms and my legs They can take everything that I have I will come crawling to you Hussein I will come crawling to you, Hussein. And just wanted to explain to the viewers watching at home, because we're in a very public space, unfortunately we're only able to recite one verse, and that too in a very low tone. So, inshallah, please watch the same uh, Noha on YouTube or online and uh, listen to the whole thing. It's a, it's, it's, a, it's a wish and a request to the Imam to call us to his side in Karbala. Jazakallah brothers, that was a beautiful recitation. Thank you so much brothers. Thanks a lot for joining us and making this episode very special. Thank you so much for all the important teachings and the duties and the various other elements which you have spoken on. Thank you so much for both of you joining us on this very special episode. Dear viewers, today we have had a great opportunity talking with few great personalities connected all the way from United Kingdom. We have spoken with Brother Jafar Ladakh, connected from the city London in United Kingdom, and then Dr. Shabir Tejani, Dr. Abbas Tejani, 
majorly known as the Johnny Brothers. Thanks to all of them for joining us and making this a very special episode. Dear viewers, tonight um, this will be the fourth episode and inshallah we'll be back with uh, a very new episode tomorrow at the very same time. Till then, keep watching Channel Win. Khuda Hafiz. <laughs>